Hello there. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to analyze and evaluate different capacity choices to aid in the selection of an appropriate process strategy. This question relates to problems 7.5 through 7.7 .7 in your text. Here we have a machine shop that has a one-year contract for the production of 200,000 gear housings for an off-road vehicle. The owner hopes the contract will be extended and the volume will increase next year. The company has developed three different cost alternatives for manufacturing. The first is general purpose equipment with an annual fixed cost of 100,000 and a variable cost of $15 per unit. The second is using a flexible manufacturing system or FMS with an annual fixed cost of $200,000 plus a variable cost of $14 per unit. And third is a dedicated machine process with annual fixed costs of 500,000 and a variable cost of $13 per unit. Our first objective is to determine which process is best for the contract. So all we want to do here is essentially determine what the total cost to produce 200,000 units under each production method is. So for the GPE, we'll take $100,000 in fixed costs and add 200,000 units times a variable cost of $15 to give us $3.1 million in total cost. For the flexible manufacturing system or FMS, we take 200,000 in fixed costs plus the 200,000 produced times $14 per unit, that equals $3 million. And then finally, for the dedicated machine or DM, we take a fixed cost of $500,000 plus 200,000 units times $13 in variable cost. That gives us $3.1 million. So as you can see, the flexible manufacturing system is the least cost alternative of all three, with GPE and DM actually costing the same. Now we can look at problem 7.6, which uses the same information, but this time to determine the economical volume for each process. Well, to do this, we want to essentially calculate what we call crossover points or points of indifference. So what we can do is set each cost equation for each alternative equal to another. So for the first one, we'll take GPE and we'll set that equation equal to the FMS system. So for GPE, we have 100,000 plus 15x, where x is the number of units, and we set that equal to the FMS cost equation of 200,000 plus 14x. Using basic algebra, we'll take 15x minus 14x and set that equal to $200,000 minus 100,000, and x is therefore $100,000. Then we'll do the same by setting FMS equal to DM. So 200,000 plus 14x is equal to 500,000 plus 13x, and if we solve for x, we get 300,000 units. Then we want to set GPE equal to DM. So we'll take 100,000 plus 15x and make that equal to 500,000 plus 13x. And that gives us a crossover quantity of 200,000 units. If we were to draw these on a graph, we would have something like this. On the vertical axis, we have total cost. And on the horizontal axis, the production. You can see the green line representing GPE that crosses the y-axis at $100,000 representing the fixed cost. FMS crosses the y-axis at $200,000, that's the blue line. And then the purple line, DM, crosses the y-axis at $500,000. Now this isn't exactly to scale, but it's good enough for our purposes. You can see where the green line for GPE crosses the blue line for FMS at 100,000 units. Then you can see where the blue line for FMS crosses over the purple line for DM, and that's at 300,000 units. And then finally, we can see the crossover point for the green line, GPE, and the purple line for DM at 200,000 units. And then what we can do is use the crossover points to help us determine where the optimal production levels are. So from zero to 100,000 units, we can see that GPE is the most cost-effective option. And then at that crossover point, it shifts to FMS between 100,000 and 300,000 units. You can see where those crossover points are. And then anything after 300,000 units, DM, or the dedicated machine, is the most cost-effective process. Finally, for problem 7.7, .7, we're asked to determine the best process for each of the following production volumes, 75,000, 275,000, and 375. So at 75,000, we know we're going to use GPE because the optimal range is anything less than 100,000. If the company expects 275,000 units to be produced or sold, then the flexible manufacturing system is the optimal because 275,000 falls between 100 and 300,000 units. And then finally, if 375,000 units are expected, 
then the company should use a dedicated machine because 375 exceeds the 300,000 minimum viable threshold for that alternative. And so that's how you use crossover points to help determine the optimal choice of process strategy.